Hello, folks. This is Jacob Harkey. It's February 22nd, 2023. And oh my goodness, what, what a week it has been. So to give a real, real quick recap uh, to those who may not have been following up with everything that's been going on over the last week, Friday night, six days ago, a handful of protesters were protesting in front of La Poubelle, the restaurant where Denny Masterson drugged Jane Doe 3 before essaying her. A total of four protesters were arrested that night. The first being Josiah Adler. Uh, and many of us were led to believe at the time that it was for something completely unrelated to protesting. Based on what I heard yesterday in court, it, it had to do with th uh, making criminal threats, allegedly, toward somebody who was either a Scientologist or affiliated in some way with Scientology. It's what it sounded like to me. As I said yesterday, uh, I am going to I'm going to do what I can to obtain a copy of the transcript so that I can get the facts as crystal clear as possible. And uh, thankfully, today I was able to get the case number and the name of the court reporter. Her name is Priscilla Morellis. I've reached out to her, and what I've been told is that it takes seven to ten business days for uh, transcript requests to, requests to go through. So. That's something I'll be sure to update you all about when I get more information from what I've heard. Josiah has been released on bail today. And thank you to everybody who was in uh, the chats of all of the streamers who were out yesterday as um, DOA was released. I'm sorry that I couldn't be there. I was hoping that I was going to be able to be there, but I was there in spirit. And as soon as I heard the DOA, DOA, I had uh, William Good's stream playing on my phone while I was driving back to Orange County for another obligation. And, well, I was really happy that he was released. It's definitely good news and a step in the right direction that he's no longer behind bars. However, there's been some, there's been some additional craziness this weekend. Um, excuse me, today specifically. Now, I linked in the description of this video two videos that were posted uh, earlier today by Aaron Smith Levin and your lawyer friend, Zach. Your lawyer friend, Zach, he's been a great resource, a great friend to Aaron in helping us to understand some of the legal jargon involved with a lot of these, uh, a lot of these legal cases that we've been paying attention to recently. So if you want to, if you want to hear uh, the details of what's happening fleshed out in some good detail, uh, I would strongly encourage you to check out those videos that are linked in the description. However, what I want to um, what I want to do really quick is do my best to explain what I understand is happening. So when DOA was arrested, he was arrested Friday night, and of course it's Friday night of a three day weekend. And because of how long it took for him to get in front of a judge, he didn't uh, or he never got in front of a judge. But because of how long he was behind bars without seeing a judge. Uh, his rights were violated because there's, I guess, as I understand it, as your lawyer friend Zach was explaining, there's a 48 hour rule, uh, which can be extended to a 72 hour rule in the event of a holiday weekend um, where you have the right, if you've been arrested without a warrant to um, to be seen by a judge within a certain amount of time. And because that didn't happen, DOA's rights were violated. So the felony charges that he received can no longer be prosecuted. Now, the the thing that gets a little bit fishy here is that he can't be charged on those felony charges. But if the LAPD turns his case over to the city attorney, the city attorney could potentially prosecute him on misdemeanor charges. And that means that what they took from his van, from the search warrant that they had on his van, apparently, uh, that included uh, computers and phones and a pair of socks, which... I don't understand what uh, what they could possibly gain from taking his socks. But during this consideration period, however, I don't know how long to expect this to take. But during this consideration period where the city attorney uh, decides whether or not they're going to uh, press any misdemeanor charges during that time, the LAPD is hanging on to all of his stuff. So he's gotten his van back. He's out. But apparently he. um Apparently, he still does not have his technology and he doesn't have access to any of his accounts because of 
the two fa two factor authentication that uh, requires him to have access to another device. Uh, Kara Feeble says Jacob update DOA said he did see a magistrate. Yes, people are starting to say that. You know what? I've been doing my very best over the last over the last several hours to try to get try to make sure I'm up to date on everything. I did have an obligation last night and then again uh, this morning. So <laughs> as I was driving here, I had a, some streams planned. So I um, it's it sounds like it sounds like maybe I didn't have totally uh, totally update up to date information on that. So if DOA did see a magistrate, uh, thank you to those of you. Thank you to those of you who are letting me know in the chat. He said he saw he saw a magistrate on Saturday though. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. So that uh, that gives me some more information. I am hoping that I will be uh, meeting up with uh, other folks who are protesting tonight. Linda Mesmer says, "Are you going to poop?" <laughs> I'm loving the nicknames that y'all are coming up with. Um, you know, I don't, uh, wherever I go, I won't be alone. I'll make sure that I'm in touch with other friends who are in the area so that I can make sure that I'm staying safe because what, uh, what a week it's been, but I wanted to pop on real quick cause, uh, I hadn't gotten a chance to converse with you all since, um, since yesterday before DOA was released. So I wanted to pop on really quick. I think that I'm going to, oh, you're telling me, I don't think Aaron realized that when he spoke with, when he spoke with Zach. Okay. So it sounds like there might be a couple of, might be, I, I'm not clear. I'm not clear. It sounds like I, I didn't hear Aaron say anything about him seeing a magistrate. And so it sounds like maybe, maybe he did. And Aaron just didn't realize that <laughs> we're all, we're all doing the very best that we can to stay up to date on information. But I appreciate those of you who in the, in the chat, who, have really been diligent and following along closely with everything. I've been doing my best to do the same, but sometimes, sometimes I'm just not always, I'm just not able to do it. Uh, 24 hours a day. I've got other things to other things to focus on in life. in life. Excuse me. Marina says, Jacob, I got a lawyer and PI phone number for DOA. Uh, I hope that you, I hope that you, um, have his contact info and that you're able to pass, pass that on to him. If not, well, I guess his contact info is not relevant right now if he doesn't have his phone. Um, I hope I hope that you've been able to pass that on to somebody. If not, feel free to feel free to send me an email at jacobaharkey at gmail.com and I'll do what I can to pass that on to him. I'm I'm uh I'm hopeful and fairly confident that I'll get to see him at some point tonight. <sighs> Sincerely socks are a whole new low. LAPD exposing themselves. ATP. ATP. Do I know what ATP stands for? <laughs> Not sure, but yeah, I, I, I really, really do not understand what, um, what those socks, what the significance there could be. Peter Foster says magistrate is civil, not criminal. Get facts, right? People, you know, like I've said uh, a handful of times over the last few days, as I'm not an attorney, I do my best to try to make sense of some of these legal, some of these legal situations and legal jargon and, well, while, while I do my best, sometimes, sometimes it's easier said than done. Um, so I don't want to be confirming or denying things that I'm not confident about, but I do appreciate those of you who are engaging about everything in the chat. Kyle says question when his search warrant says pepper spray, cell phones, computer devices, and illegal weapons, what gives them right to business cards, socks, and West Virginia paperwork? It's a great question. I, 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 I don't really know why they're the socks are truly the most confusing thing to me because I don't know what information, what evidence of anything they even could gain from it. It's, it's pr pretty ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like that's what people are saying. DOA talked about it. Aaron didn't know. It's, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody, he mentioned it in one of the four hour live streams. It was easy to miss. Got it. So it sounds like that might have been, yeah, it sounds like that that, that might have been, uh, not necessarily the headline of a video, but it's something that came up. Got it. Got it. Somebody's saying, is Josiah free? So I've heard uh, through the grapevine that, yes, he was released around 8 a.m. this morning. I haven't uh, I haven't contacted him or seen him, but that's what I've that's what I've heard from a friend who heard from streets who says they heard from streets. That's so that's my understanding is that is that, yes, he's out on bail. Um, let me see if there's any other uh, anybody else chatting in here or anything else that I can get to. I did want to just let uh I did want to just let you guys know too that I've still got his links in the chat. I see a handful of people mentioning he needs a lawyer and it sounded like that was uh that was a takeaway that Aaron and your lawyer friend Zach both had in their updates as well. Um 
based on based on what they're saying, it sounds like the LAPD. Could, well, I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak for DOA, but he might have grounds to sue. He his rights have been violated, and now his property. He doesn't have access to his property, and I really wish him the best. I also know that lawyer fees are not cheap. So again, I have his uh, links for donation in the chat. Although another thing is, as long as he doesn't have his property, I don't know that he's going to be able to access his PayPal account if he can't get into his phone. Um, last I heard, last I heard his cash app was good. I, th- he may run into similar, similar issues there. And I'm, I'm, I'm just not sure, but I hope that, um, I hope that in any case, donating the money to him is going to be, or donating the money to his accounts will eventually help him to pay attorney's fees or whatever other needs he has that we can help him out with. Because I really feel for him right now. He's he's really been been going through it. Linda Mesmer says, "Take care of yourself, Jacob. I am I am doing my best. Believe me. It's, it's some days it's easier than others, but honestly, all of you who are in the chat who have been tuning into these streams and giving me support and reaching out to uh, provide additional info. I've since since my streams yesterday, I had folks reaching out to me." with uh, information about Josiah's case number. I had somebody who uh, worked for the LA Superior Court give me information about obtaining court transcripts. Uh, I uh, really, the support, the support is something that keeps me going and I really appreciate it a lot. Falling Star says, when is everyone going live tonight to protest? It, it's not It's not really organized, so I can't really say with confidence when we can expect. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm here, I'm in LA now. And I'm hungry, so I think when, I'll probably wrap up this stream fairly quickly and uh, go get a bite to eat, and then go on YouTube, go on TikTok, see if I see anybody in the area who's live, and figure out where they are, and maybe come and join them. I mean, truly, that's how it tends to go. I I, I know that I've uh, said a handful of times over the last few days these these aren't these aren't generally protests that are organized with a location and a time, everything and everything in advance. I mean, I can count on my hand over the last couple of months, how many times that that's happened. And it was when everybody came, when we or when we went in front of the shrine in December, um, when Aaron came into town, uh, was that last month? I want to, I feel like it was last month. That sounds, that sounds right to me. And then of course this weekend, when more folks are coming into town tonight, I expect people to be out tonight as far as a time and a place. We'll see. We'll see. Probably, probably sooner rather than later, though, I would guess. <laughs> Chicana says, Jacob Harkey, are you always this nice and articulate or do you go dummy silly like the rest of us sometimes? Well, I mean, here's the thing. When I'm when I'm on a live stream, uh, I know that I'm talking to the public and it's going out to the public. So I'm doing my best to carry myself um, in a way that I can be understood and articulate. I mean, hey, we're, we all we all have fun times off air. I mean, hope that answers your question. I don't know. <laughs> you might be, it might be, um, you might be able to get a better answer from those who know me than me just talking about myself. All right. Oh, okay. ATP at this point. Got it. Got it. So Cynthia Butler does say he, he you can get DNA from socks. So he, if I'm not mistaken, he also mentioned that he got a DNA cheek swab of some kind while he was in jail. Um, in which case, I don't know what additional what additional info they'd be able to gain from socks, but who knows? I it, there could be some some additional motive that I don't know of. Gosh, the socks was the missing tear gas. Oh, it's it's nice to it's nice to throw some jokes in there to lighten up all of the all of the craziness of the last few days. <laughs> all right, let me. See if there's anybody else. Uh, any? Oh, Peter Foster. If I came across as rude, understand that isn't how I meant it to sound. Sorry. No, no worries, Peter. I appreciate I appreciate the clarification, but you're all good. No, no worries. Let me see if there is anybody else that I wanted to check in with, or anybody else who had questions that I may be able to answer. Okay. So Arda A says I really want to hear from Josiah what happened that he got arrested. Um, because he does still have an upcoming court date, I made a note of it. I don't have it in front of me, but I'll, uh, I'll be keeping an eye on it, uh, over the next few weeks. Um, 
he has an upcoming court date and this is not a charge that's been dropped. It is still pending. Talking about it publicly, what you say can and will be used against used against you. So talking about it publicly might not be might not be the best idea at this point for him. Um, and like I've said, uh, some folks have some folks have have reached out to me uh, to raise some concerns about his credibility. I understand now that he has been involved with some maybe not so pleasant interactions with other protesters. I I understand that he's had a troubled past. I also know that he is young and I, I, I will, I'll say again that I wish him I wish him the best in getting through what he's currently going through and getting getting on the right foot moving forward. Um, but all of that said, talking about an ongoing criminal investigation uh, for which you're out on bail and have upcoming court dates, talking about it publicly could just give um, it could give the prosecutors more more to work with. And I don't, I just don't know that there's much to be gained on his part. I guess that's what I was trying to get at. I don't, I don't know that, I don't know that it would help him at all to do that. So I I wouldn't, I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for that, but I I understand. I understand your curiosity. Don't get me wrong. All right. Linda says, talk to streets. He predicted they would do this last night. Happened to him. Part of the ride. Yeah, and I saw him interacting in the comments section of Aaron and uh, your lawyer friend Zach's video, where that was essentially that was essentially what I understood from him too. That this is this is typical. This uh, this is what they do when they when felony charges when a felony case is dismissed, but the LAPD has uh, taken property as part of a search warrant that was related to the felony charges. Rather than just give the property back, they'll. Uh, turn it over to the city attorney and uh, give the city attorney uh, a, some period of time or the city attorney has some period of time to consider whether or not they're going to pursue misdemeanor charges now that the felony charges are no longer being pursued. And I guess during that time, they don't have to give up the property. So I I, I do not like that that's the way it is, but I'm I'm glad that we have William as a resource who's familiar with these practices that's able to update us about that kind of stuff. Looking to see what else I what else I've seen in here to see if there's anybody else. Okay, so some folks are confirming he can't access PayPal. Um so then it sounds like in that case Cash App is probably the best. Yeah, yeah, I see more folks saying that. It sounds like Cash App is going to be the best way to go most likely. And thank you to those who are uh, who are keeping us up to up to date on that. Oh, uh, actually, I'm also seeing some folks say he has access to his PayPal card. You know what? And that, I I don't want to confirm or deny because I'm I'm not I'm not certain either way. I'll hopefully see him later tonight, and after I've gotten a bite to eat, go live again, and hopefully we can set the record straight on that. Let me see anybody else? Simply Sarah says, "Can you put in Mindy's channel?" Um, her name is Mindy Willens. That's M-I-N-D-Y-W-I-L-L-E-N-S. And based on what folks are saying in the chat, it sounds like she was live today with DOA for several hours. I wasn't able to catch much of it because uh, because I've been busy with other things in life. But um, if anybody, yeah, that's her name, Mindy Willens, M-I-N-D-Y-W-I-L-L-E-N-S. So you can look her up. Uh, if there happen to be any mods in the chat who are able to who are able to drop the link that would that would be helpful um but yeah if she's if you want to check out her live with doa earlier today that's where you can reach her let me see what else i can see mandy mcgee says yo mandy i mandy really needs a shout out because she is the first one who reached out to me about modding when i was early on in this in this experience that is YouTube, that is YouTube live streaming, which I'm still pretty new to. It's, it's not like I've been doing this for a long time. It, this last week feels like much longer than a week based on everything that's happened. But anyway, uh, Mindy, I appreciate all that you have uh, done to help me with the channel. And I know that we've been in touch over the last few days, trying to set up a time to uh, talk off air. And I've had a tough time scheduling it with everything that's going on, but I promise it'll happen soon. And um, we'll we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. But huge shout out to Mandy. Let me 
see who else I see. Da, 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 da. Oh, Bo Bead says, I appreciated and liked your Julian Assange coverage the other day as well. Yes. So uh, for those who saw that, thank you for all the positive feedback that I've gotten about that. I think it's pretty relevant to all uh, matters concerning freedom of speech and freedom of the press and the freedom of journalists and activists to publish information and publicly discuss uh, sensitive information. Um, from what I understand, the two-day hearing regarding whether or not Julian Assange will be able to uh, appeal his extradition to the U.S. has concluded, but a decision is not expected to be reached for maybe a month. Um, so I'll continue to keep an eye on that. I'll, I, I'll definitely continue to share updates about that as I get more updates. Oh, are you Jellin says he can access PayPal, not cash app. Thank you for letting me know. Are you Jellin? So in that case, in that case, um, are you Jellin? I know is in, uh, knows DOA better than be longer than I have. So thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Um, yeah, I, I apologize for the back and forth about information about that. It's, I've been taking information in bits and pieces. And so thank you for letting me know. I appreciate that. Are you Jellin? Anything else before I wrap this up and go get a bite to eat? Mm. All right. I, I don't know that I see any. Oh, wait. The chat keeps refreshing. Gosh, it can be tough to, <laughs> tough to keep up with all of this. I'll scroll for another moment or so, and we will get... Aliyah says, hola, Jacobo, como estas? Bien, y tú? Yeah, I took four years of Spanish in high school and then another year in college, but what I just said <laughs> about the extent of my conversational Spanish, well, that's not totally true. I my, spe my reading and writing is okay, but my speaking and listening, well, it can just be tough for me to keep up with everything. <laughs> uh, I, I like, I, I don't know how to uh, explain it because I know that it sounds to me when I'm hearing native Spanish speakers talk like they're just speaking so fast that it's hard for me to it's hard for me to catch everything. And having a conversation is just almost out of the question, which is embarrassing considering I studied it for five years. But who knows, maybe one day I'll spend some time in another country and that'll help me out. And I will be able to hone in my Spanish speaking skills. <laughs> All right. I am just Nancy says, I love your glasses, but may I see your face for a second without them, please? Otherwise, no problem, of course. Yep. Looks like my hair is fully blending in with the background right now, which is an interesting look in this car. But um, this is me without glasses. Hope you got what you wanted. <laughs> Okay, Nikki Hitton passes. DOA said respectfully that if people have phone numbers and contacts to lawyers, to not email him because he has been through this many times before. So if people want to help, he'd prefer they reach out themselves. Wait, I'm, I might be a little bit confused. You're saying that if lawyers want to help, that they can reach out themselves? Or because um, you're saying if people have phone numbers and contacts to lawyers, to not email him. Oh, Okay, so I, th I think what you mean is that if people have the contact info of lawyers, then he doesn't want them to reach out to him. But if lawyers want to work with him, then he wants them to reach out. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, not I'm not sure if I understand that. But if, uh, if you want to if you want to clarify that, feel free to. All right. What else do I see? Oh, Susie Q says, Jacob, almost 4K subs. Good for you. Yeah, I th thank you. I... I, I've really been blown away by how how much this this channel has grown. I mean, I remember my first couple of streams, it was uh, it was just me kind of talking to, oftentimes an audience of uh, forty or less, and I was able to engage with almost the whole chat. I wish I was still able to do that, but now there's there's so many of you that I <laughs> I do my best to keep up with it, and it can be tough. But I again I I appreciate you all who have been along for the ride, who are tuning into these, it's it's really, really much appreciated.
Cali Blue 2 says the Scientology Money Project did a live talking about how they like to use tear gas charges just to get them in the system. I haven't seen the one that you're talking about, but uh, I know Jeffrey Augustine of the Scientology Money Project. He's a great private investigator and really just intelligent um, critic, longtime critic of Scientology uh, and of uh, dirty policing tactics. And yeah, he's he's uh, he's really been a great resource. So thank you for plugging that. I'll be sure to I'll be sure to check him out. Check that. Check out the video you're talking about. All right. Let me see what else I can see. DS says, hey, hey, DS. Good to see you in here. Anybody else? Dustin Fountain says, Jacob, are you going on the SP cruise in September? I don't know what that is, but that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, is there, there, is there an SP cruise happening? If so, I, I would love to be there. Um, so to be determined, but if, if, if there's an SP cruise happening, I want to know the details. <laughs> so thank you for bringing that up. I'm getting excited just thinking about what that could look like. <laughs> Rob Mama says, we protesting tonight? I mean, I drove all the I didn't drive up to LA for nothing. <laughs> um, we'll see. I I don't know. I don't know what other folks are up to. Looks like I've been live for almost a half hour. So it's possible that in the half hour since I've been live, that others have gone live. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm gonna get a bite to eat and then hopefully meet up with some with some other folks. Anything else? Cozy Cafe says, that was also me with Spanish. Yeah, learning a foreign language after you've already, uh, after your brain has already developed a certain, to a certain uh, level is, is, is tough. I know that I've, I've learned something recently that if you start learning if you're, or when you're, when you're under the age of six, I think, I think it's six or something around there, your brain is just so primed to absorb language that you can learn multiple languages without having an accent in either one. And it's not like it's hard to learn because your brain is already naturally primed for it, but learning it uh, in high school and college after your brain has already developed quite a bit, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Sharon Serendipity says, are you from LA or did you move there? So to give a quick history of uh, my living, my living history, I was born in San Jose, California, which is in the Bay Area, about an hour inland from San Francisco. When I was four, my family moved down to Orange County uh, and my, uh, I still live in Orange County to this day. Uh, I have also, I lived in LA for a bit when I was going to school at UCLA um, where I have a bachelor's degree from, uh, I worked for a couple of years, uh, up in the Bay area again, up in San Jose again, uh, from 2021 to 2023. And, uh, in 2023, I moved back down to orange County, which is a County South of LA. So, so it's a bit of a commute for me to come up here, which is why I'm not able to always come up every day. Like some other folks are. Um, but I I'd say I live 55 miles or so ish south of downtown LA, something like that, which can be anywhere from an hour to two and a half hours, depending on traffic. <laughs> all right. I'm hearing a loud helicopter above me. I wonder what that's all about. DK says like and subscribe. Yeah. Thank you for the reminder. If you have not already and you are watching this video, I would appreciate it very much if you gave it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, we'd love to have you on board as a subscriber. Continuing to scroll, see if there's anybody else in the chat that I can answer any questions. Uh, Kid Freshy, oof. Question, anyone ever told you that you look or act like these Zodiac Killer victim Brian Hartnell? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, I have not ever been told that. I don't think that I know what that man looks like or looked like. Um, you know, maybe I'll look up a picture of him after I get off here because no, it's interesting. I, so I used to get told all the time, 
gosh. When I was in middle school and the Twilight movies were really popular, I used to get told that I looked like Taylor Lautner. Lautner? Lautner? I don't know if I'm confident about how to pronounce his last name. He was Jacob Black in the Twilight movies, um, which was just an additional uh, humorous humorous aspect because my name is also Jacob. Um, and funnily enough, when I was in middle school, I went to a children's musical theater studio that uh, put on um, a musical theater camp where we did a little production of what we called Twilight the Musical, where we, uh, we performed a very, very um, expedited version of the expedited, sh of a short, child-friendly version of the script and story of Twilight, which as I'm saying out loud, I'm like, how did we do that? But we used the music from Spring Awakening. So if you happen to look back at my videos that are posted to my channel, there's a video of me singing the song of Purple Summer uh, when I was about 11 or 12 years old. I didn't really need to share all of that, but speaking of doppelgangers and people who I've been told that I look like, <laughs> that's what crossed my mind. Thank you for the comment, Kid Freshy. <laughs> all right, anybody else that I can check in with? Circus Rider says, yes, there is a cruise. SP Cruise, Reese is going. Okay, yeah, I am really, really curious to get some more info about that because, yeah, I would love to. Dustin Fountain says, I'll send the info in an email. I look forward to it. Thank you. DOA said he is going. All right. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting excited. I don't even know the details yet, and I'm already excited just thinking about how fun it could be. <laughs> FM says, Jacob, are you working on a career in journaling? I'm super interested in that. I mean... The truth is I'm kind of uh, dipping my feet into a handful of different career paths right now. Uh, I'm interested in law. I'm interested in journalism. I'm interested in film and television. I'm interested in music. Uh, I'm interested in politics. <sighs> so we'll see. This live streaming, though, uh, it's, it's been paying attention to court cases involving Scientology, involving folks, folks that uh, I know. It's, it's really been good experience for me, uh, being able to practice uh, talking to the camera, uh, practice paying attention to the facts and details of uh, court cases and uh, reporting on them. So journal, journalism is definitely is definitely one of the one of the career paths that I am particularly interested in. So we'll see. I know I know I just named off a bunch of other careers that I'm interested in. We'll see. I have no idea where to see myself five, five years from now, but I appreciate all of the support that I've gotten and all of those of you who have uh, given me compliments about my reporting skills. I, I'm, I really appreciate you all. Trisha says the cruise is expensive. Well, we'll see. Once I, once I get the details, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Continue into Evil Blue Eyes. The streets will be live in 18 minutes. All right. In that case, I will probably get off before too long to get that bite to eat that I've been talking about. Anybody? Dustin Fountain says, I'm from San Jose. Hey, look at that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know if you ever go back out there to visit, but uh, yeah, there's definitely there's definitely some fun stuff to do to do out there. I definitely have some good memories over the last few years with friends up there. It's a it's a fun spot. Hmm. Anybody? Jacob with a cape on. Super Jacob. Yeah, this Clark Kent thing is really starting to stick, which I'll take it. I better put my glasses back on now that I'm uh, getting these comments. Um, but yeah, that might have to be my Halloween costume this coming year. I, uh, I didn't have anything else planned yet, and now it sounds like <laughs> Clark Kent is the new popular nickname on here. <laughs> If you're interested in the cruise, there is a deadline for sign-up deposit looming. Contact Relatable Reese ASAP, and she can fill you in, assuming there isn't someone in the chat with the deets. Well, it sounds like I got an email from Dustin Fountain, which, or I will have one coming, which I'll appreciate. And um, so I'll I'll know details soon. But yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, Let me know. SJ says, cool, I used to live in Santana Row. Heck yeah, we're building some San Jose community in the chat. I love to see it. Trinity says, how did you find out about these protests and what made you want to join? Um, 
these will probably be my last couple last couple of questions uh, before I before I do decide to go get some dinner. Um, but I essentially I've been paying attention to the fight against uh, or the fight to expose the abuses of the Church of Scientology since about fall of 2020, when uh, Leah Remini Scientology in the aftermath was put on Netflix. And uh, I didn't really start taking personal personal action beyond just following the activists who were exposing Scientology until um, about se September of this last year. I attended Danny Masterson's uh, sentencing at the Clara Shortridge Foltz Criminal Justice Center, which was September 7th. And it was not long after that that I saw that Alexa Nicholas of Eat Predators was organizing a protest in front of Scientology's Big Blue Building. So I went to that, and that's where I met Alexa. I met Lara FM. And then uh, less than a month later, Alexa organized another protest in front of the Scientology Celebrity Center. And Lara was there again, and it was there that I met Serge and Liz Ferris and several other um, ex-Scientologists and activists who were there to support the cause. And it was around that same time, I think, that uh, folks like William and Jessica also started to do TikToks uh, in front of the Hollywood Test Center. I didn't personally meet up with them until uh, the day of the Scientology event at the Shrine, where David Miscavige spoke. Uh, I went there. Uh, I went there to protest that day, and that's when I got to meet a handful of the TikTokers who had been protesting. And since then, I'm happy to call all of them friends. And not looking back, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. All right. It looks like that is going to just about do it for today. Falling Star asked when everyone is protesting tonight. Please be careful when answering. Someone may be trying to vet you to say something that make it sounds like you guys are an organized group. Yeah, so with the with the answer that I gave, I I I was trying to kind of say there. I I don't usually I don't usually even make plans with people ahead of time. Oftentimes I'll just come up to LA, check uh YouTube and TikTok, see who might be out, see who I can join. Yeah, we'll we'll I'll to be determined where we'll be. I don't, I don't know myself yet. <laughs> so Sparknell says, I thought you were a journalist. Well, some of you may have caught me chat uh, a little bit over the last week or so about some questions about the, the terms activism versus journalism. And can you be both? Can you, uh, can you call yourself an activist and also call yourself a journalist? Is it ethical to call yourself a journalist when you're also uh clearly stating your opinion. I mean, just as a quick example, I want Scientology's tax exempt status to be revoked. I think that they are clearly, I'm of the opinion that they are clearly in violation of the IRS uh, rules and regulations for tax exempt organizations. Um, arguably, as a journalist, journalists are supposed to look at the facts without interjecting their opinion and just looking at things objectively. So by say, by making those things clear, does that uh, does that make me more on the activist side and not a journalist? You know, it's it's I, th I think it's a it can be a conversation that different people would have different opinions. And it's definitely a dialogue that I'd love to keep open. Uh, a handful of you guys commented, um, commented and joined into that conversation when I talked about it on a recent stream, which I I appreciated. It was it, I actually thought that it was a it was a, it was a really fun topic to engage in. And I think I think a necessary and worthwhile topic to engage in. So, I mean, as far as I thought you were a journalist, I mean, here's another thing that this makes me think of. I, I saw I saw a good friend of mine post something today that said, stop calling yourself an aspiring artist or an aspiring writer or an aspiring journalist. The first one of the first steps to breaking in, you got to you got to believe in yourself. So, hey, I could call myself an aspiring reporter. I could also just call myself a reporter. Um, I guess partly it comes down to things like my own confidence. Well, <laughs> I can get into more of that another time, maybe. But I mean, am I a journalist? Am I an activist? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> All right. Growing up in Scientology says, hey, hey, a, a Ron. I, uh, I'm wrapping up this stream before too, too long. I really appreciate all of the streams that you did today with, uh, your lawyer friend, Zach, though. Those were definitely very helpful for me in 
getting caught up with all of the details about uh, what we know about what's going on with DOA and why he can't get his stuff back. So yeah, huge shout out to growing up in Scientology. I'm fairly confident that if you're on this channel, uh, you probably are already familiar with growing up in Scientology and he probably doesn't need a plug from me. But hey, if you're not already subscribed to him, get on over there and do just that because he's streaming just about daily with some top-notch information about what's going on in the world of the bubble that is the Church of Scientology. <laughs> but good to see you in here, A.A. Ron. And I'm looking forward to seeing you this weekend. Mary Gabrielle Souther says, maybe you should apply to the LAPD. No. <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, big pass on that one. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that you mean the comment in the sense of like, oh, well, maybe I can come in and fix things and set things on the right path, which if that's what you meant, I appreciate I appreciate the I appreciate the thought, but not not the career path for me. <laughs> All right. Looks like my Oh, and Mandy's got the cruise information right there. Thank you, Mandy. That's awesome. Yeah, well, definitely. Okay, yeah, reminder, the SP at Sea cruise is a go. Setting sail from Miami, Florida, September 21st, 2024. It's going to be a blast. See Chow Yun Smut's community page for details. All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Thank you. Yeah, and want to join the SPs at sea? I'm looking at another comment from many that says, drop an email to chowyunsmut at gmail.com and let me know which type of cabin you want. We've got inside, ocean view, and balcony cabins available for our group sailing on Carnival Magic. We'll be setting sail from Miami on September 21st, 2024 for eight days to Southern Caribbean and Dominican Republic. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mandy. I appreciate that. All right. It looks like... Oh, John Strange says, I heard your songs. Not bad at all. Um, I'm thinking you might be talking about uh, talking about some of those ones that I posted when I was uh, when I was pretty young. Um, thank you. Yeah, those are some those are always a fun walk down memory lane. Anything else I can see? Yeah, Irrelevant Panda says, Jacob, I've been thinking about those questions for years. I see no ethical issues. A lot of people would say it is impossible to report without bias at all. I would agree with that. I think just about everybody is. Yeah, there's 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 always there's always going to be bias in and whenever somebody is talking about. Talking about the facts of any case. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. All right. Let me. Let me see. Question, were you in Scientology? I was not. I'm a never in. Anything else? Hot Tea says, enjoy dinner. And I appreciate that. I think that I'm going to be getting off here just in a moment. And I am going to, yep, um, head around the corner to get a bite to eat. Uh, I'd say that you can reasonably expect that I will likely be uh, going live again before too, too long. Uh, thank you to those of you who tuned into this one. Thank you to those of you who uh, have watched all the way to the very end. And I will see you all next time. Have a safe night until then.